One of the biggest questions Darren and I get every year is, what should I use for spray adjuvants on my farm? Well, and the other question of that is, Brad, why do I need all these spray adjuvants? Why don't they just put it all in the jug? Because a lot of guys say, man, I'm spraying Roundup. Chances are they could put an additive in there that I could use with just about anything. Okay, so here's what it comes down to. In a lot of cases, they can't put the right adjuvants in there. There might be an antagonism issue. In other words, when they put a certain adjuvant in, all of a sudden, the product's not going to work as well. It's not going to store as long. There's some issue that way. And the other thing is, I don't want my adjuvants in because I need whole different adjuvants if I have had cool and damp days for a long time as opposed to if I've had hot and dry days for a long time and we'll explain that a little bit here. Well the other thing too Brian is if you've got different products you have so much more flexibility when you don't put all the adjuvants in the jug. Think about all the things that get mixed with Roundup. It might be a herbicide one time, it might be a fungicide another time, it could be an insecticide you just don't know what they're going to mix in there so that's why Monsanto or the other companies making glyphosate, you know, they may put some surfactant in, but chances are they're not going to put everything that you need to mix with that product. Okay, the two major categories that we're talking about here when it comes to spray adjuvants are basically the nitrogen source and then the spreader sticker side. So let's get into that spreader sticker thing. And don't get me wrong, there are all kinds of different products out there. We're just going to talk about some base products, very simple, and those would be non-ionic surfactant, crop oil concentrate, and methylated seed oil. Well, thank goodness, Brian. I was just thinking, oh no, we're going to have to name off about a hundred different things here. And then the other side of it is a lot of them are combined. Oh, well, we want a high load crop oil with a little more surfactant in than normal. And, you know, there's all kinds of different things companies are doing. And that may be designed for one specific product or another. But the base products that we're talking about could pretty much be used with just about anything on the market. The labels are going to advise you which one is going to work the best with that particular product or with certain tank mixes. And when we talk about methylated seed oil, that's generally thought of as the highest grade one. Okay, so something like a canola oil or soybean oil, that's going to be your methylated seed oil. And like Darren said, that is going to help get that product into the plant quickly. Crop oil concentrate is just a slight step down from that. And then you have non-ionic surfactant. Non-ionic surfactant, basically all that's doing is it's spreading it over the leaf and it's helping it stick on the leaf. It doesn't do a whole lot for penetration. With the crop oil and the methylated seed oil, they do quite a bit more for penetration. If you want to spray a herbicide onto a weed and it's got a thick waxy cuticle, how's that herbicide going to get in there? Without the crop oil or methylated seed oil, the herbicide might just stay on the outside part of that leaf and never penetrate, never get in and control the weed. And there you can see why we have to know what the weather conditions are going to be when you're trying to spray in order to make a specific recommendation and why on Ag PhD a lot of times we'll say, oh use this product or that product for the weed of the week, but we don't always talk about what the additives are going to be because it's going to be completely different in well, Alabama than it is in North Dakota. Yeah, it could be surfactant one day, could be crop oil the next day, and it could be methylated seed oil on day three. So we don't know, and that's why, like on our own farm, we try to have all three of those available all the time so we can tell whoever's running the sprayer that day, hey, make sure you're mixing this in with that particular combination. Okay, now the other thing we talked about is the nitrogen sources, and typically there's liquid 28% or a liquid source of nitrogen, and there's also a dry like ammonium sulfate. Now many times you'll also have a third category of ammonium sulfate replacement product. So it's a yep. low use rate liquid that's supposed to take the place of ammonium sulfate. Okay, let's talk about the reason why people will throw ammonium sulfate with glyphosate, for example. Ammonium sulfate does a few different things. It's going to lower the water or spray solution pH, and that's a good thing. Roundup likes that. Not all products like lower pHs. If you want a little bit higher pH, you use liquid 28% instead. But the ammonium sulfate will lower the pH just a little bit. What the ammonium sulfate also does is provides a nitrogen source. The nitrogen is good for the weed and good for the crop. It helps the weed in that it helps move that herbicide more quickly to the growing point. It helps that weed speed up its growth. It also helps speed up the growth of the crop and then you get a little bit faster recovery. And finally, the other thing ammonium sulfate does is it will help sequester hard water ions, things like magnesium and calcium that could potentially tie up the Roundup. Now, some products prefer to use liquid 28% with them. Maybe they like to have a higher pH in your spray solution. In many cases, that's where liquid 28% gets recommended instead of ammonium sulfate. The other thing is some farmers just refuse to use dry products 
looks like ammonium sulfate. They yeah, say, you know, I'm going to mix it in with water. I don't want to take a chance that I dump a whole bag in and it just ends up being one big lump oh, that doesn't work. And what it comes down to is if you buy the wrong ammonium sulfate, there's a bunch of not very soluble ammonium sulfate in the market. But the bigger issue is just a lot of guys don't want to carry 51 pound bags. And I tell people all the time, why not get yourself a little bit of exercise every day? How many, how many of those bags <laughs> well, are you going to lug around over an entire day? 40 bags. Well, hold, you know? hold on though. You don't even need to do that, Brian. Here's how I would do it. I would just set up a, a cone inductor and your water source can pump right through that cone inductor and there yep. you go. And it'll go right up into the sprayer. But anyway, the reason why we're trying to talk easy. you into using ammonium sulfate is it's the best product on the market and, and it's, it's cheap. the cheapest. <laughs> yeah. When you've got something that's the best and the least expensive, don't let something like, well, the, the bulk physical commodity of it is just so much for me, it's too much weight. Let's figure a way around that because you can save a lot of money and have better performance. So once again, with those ammonium sulfate replacement products, they're not quite as good. And here's the other thing with them. They're really not true ammonium sulfate. They call themselves ammonium sulfate replacement products, but they don't do all the good things that ammonium sulfate does. Well, anyway, with the spray adjuvant talk, just make sure you're talking to your agronomist and make sure you're changing spray adjuvants depending on weather conditions. It does make a big difference. And all those things make a big difference when it comes to controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how coming up next.